All right, good to see you guys this morning. Glad you're here. What a beautiful day. Amen. Uh, Karen and I went on Friday and Saturday up in the mountains of uh, in Radford, and uh, we didn't realize that we were only 15 minutes away from where Tony is. <laughs> and uh, But anyway, ironically, as soon as I pulled in to Radford, I kid you not, Tony called me. I mean, I had talk, I had talked to Tony in a month or so. And he called me right when I pulled in the race. He said, Rapper, we know Rapper. He said, You're 15 minutes away from me. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so we were up there for a short trip, having to uh, take care of some business, and uh, so we couldn't meet with him. Uh, but anyway, he said, Jenny's at the Walmart at Rapper right now. <laughs> and so, anyway, uh, beautiful mountain country up there, and uh, enjoyed that. I uh, actually stayed in an Airbnb of a, a Christian. Uh, talked with him after uh, we were getting ready to leave. It was a blessing. Said he cut his teeth on Tozer. And uh, that was a blessing, and uh, he said that uh, several things that just uh, was going to help us out in the future, and uh, so praise God for that. Uh, before I forget it, there is a Bible back there that, uh, Grace, did you get me that Bible? Miss Lisa and I. Miss Lisa and I, okay. They got me a Bible and, uh, and uh, for people to sign, um, and so I want to make sure I remember that. Just put in there your, your favorite scripture verse, put your name by it, right? And I like your verse. Highlight your verse and put your name by it, and uh, so it'll be something we can remember you by. I appreciate if you do that. I appreciate them getting me that Bible. And uh, so it's sitting back there. You can see it as soon as you go through those double doors. It's to the left where the pictures uh, usually are. And uh, uh, so you sign that if you would and put your favorite verse on there so we can uh, look through that and take it home. And, and as we're praying, uh, we can uh, seek the face of God on your verse of Scripture for you uh, if you're favorite verse doesn't affect you, there's a problem in there. Yeah, there's definitely a problem. So, uh, anyway, God bless you again. Glad that you're here. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, just, uh, God is good. There's nobody like God. And uh, how many of you, and I hate to even ask this question, but how many of you are, are comfortable right now with the temperature in here? Most everybody. Okay, that's what I kind of figured. All right, so amen. We're going to pray about that. <laughs> This is, this is some real, yeah, I might have to do that, Randy, take that jacket off. This is some, this kind of weather right here, it's just you know, that in-between, buddy. I'd rather have the air on myself, but that's okay. You got to die to self, don't you? Amen? So let's just sweat it on out. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for who you are. We thank you, God, that we can come to uh, the one true God. There's nobody like thee. We bow before omnipotence and an all-sufficient God that can provide everything and has provided everything in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're here today to magnify, worship Him, praise Him, and we know, Father, that brings glory to you. And so that's what we want to do. And Father, we know also that we need your help. We need the Spirit of God to show us the Word of God and how we're so blessed to have both. And so we pray, God, our great three-in-one God, you would once again do a mighty work in our hearts and minds. Please help us not to walk out of here the same as we came in. And Father, there's many that could be here that are not. There's others that uh, could not be here and are not. And so you know both situations. And Father, we pray, God, we know all across uh, this country, many, many could be in their respective churches, and yet they found something better to do. And we pray, God, you'd help them, Lord. And then those that, again, would desire to be here, but for some reason only you know, Father, they could not in these other churches also around the United States. I pray you'd be with them. Father, we pray, God, that you just help us to not focus on other things, but just pray, seek your face, and focus on you and you alone. Teach us exactly what we need during these turbulent times. And we know exactly what we need is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you've given us him freely. And so we pray you'd help us to freely worship and learn more about him today. And guide us and direct us into all truth. And we'll be careful, Father, to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, 
Let's take our hymn books this morning, please, and turn to page 730. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Let's, let's stand and sing all four verses, please. Page 730. <laughs> Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ seek your face, that we might turn to you and repent of our sins, Lord. You want us to be in a condition, Lord, that we can pray and our prayers be answered. Sure. And I'm afraid many times that we're not in that condition. Help us, Lord, that we might be the way you want us to be. If we will, we'll be just right. Help us, help us, and our teacher of the week is Paul Price. Appreciate him. Say amen. 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 Appreciate all of our teachers. Uh, boy, lift them up to the Lord that we might uh, again uh, present truth, speak truth uh, in love, and, uh, and uh, God might convict our hearts of the truth. Uh, Gerald and Francis, Francis Mitchum are missionaries of the month in Mongolia. Certainly want to lift them up to the Lord in prayer. And Mike Pence, our vice president, certainly need to lift him up, and all of our leaders. Chatham County Sheriff's Department uh, office. We're going to lift them up to the Lord in prayer and uh, just uh, all that's involved uh, with, with those folks. Certainly want to uh, just pray for leadership, uh, godly leadership, that, that people would follow God and uh, just um, trust Him. Um, also, uh, don't forget on uh, Friday, uh, 
13th uh, will be a baby shower for Hannah Johnson in the Fellowship Hall, 6.30 to 8.30. It's a floating shower. Uh, please sign up uh, for that shower. Uh, there are the sheets in the foyer. Uh, and so uh, we want you to sign up for that if you, you would. All right. Well, do you have a birthday today or yesterday, Mr. Marley? Was your birthday yesterday? Yay. Today, that's what I thought, yeah. today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Amen. How does 65 feel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ms. Marley laughs because she's only 64. She doesn't know how it feels. Right, Ms. Marley? Wrong. Wrong. Okay, let's just move right ahead. All right. And, Wrong man. Huh? Wrong man. Wrong man. <laughs> All right. Amen. We're glad that you're, we didn't have you in the bulletin there. We do have Arden and Holly and Janelle. We don't have you in there. You, you share a birthday with Arden, all right? And Arden Talley, so praise God for that. Again, glad that you're here. Look forward to God speaking to oh, our hearts. No, and, I don't. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought she was talking to me. All right, amen. I was. <laughs> Let's take our hymn books once again, please, and turn to page 572, Blessed Assurance. Let's stand and sing all three verses, please, page 572. <laughs> church um, it'll be uh, the viewing to be from two to three and we'll go straight into the funeral at three o'clock and then we'll have a, a just a small graveside uh, service uh, 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 right after that and so that'll be two o'clock here uh, for the viewing and then at three o'clock we'll go straight into the funeral and uh, then we'll uh, go over to the cemetery and um, have a just a small just basically reading of scripture and pray uh, with the family. So lift them up to the Lord in prayer, if you would. Uh, just uh, praise God. Cliff is going to be with his Lord, and we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. uh, again, certainly uh, he'll be missed, and we'll pray for Miss Ann. Uh, but uh, he's not wanting to come back here. There's nobody that leaves this world and goes to be with Jesus that wants to come back here <laughs> in no way, no shape or form. And uh, we should have a longing and desire to go to be with him. Amen? Amen. And we ought to be excited about that. All right, some prayer requests. Uh, while I was up on the land trying to get some things squared away as far as uh, uh, 
burials and different things and get some things on paper uh, uh, so I can leave this to the next man that comes in, in, in better shape than when, than when we had it. And so anyway, I was talking to a man up there that was digging the grave, and he wants us to pray for a man. He, would, he didn't tell me his name. He said right now he doesn't want it to be revealed, but he has throat cancer, he believes, and he wants us to pray for him. And so let's lift up this man in prayer. And uh, also, uh, Judy McGinnis, um, uh, uh, Randy's uh, cousin, was uh, bit by a scorpion. And so uh, you don't hear that every day. And so she had to go to the hospital, and she's healing up, right? We think oh, she's been in a lot of pain. Lots of pain. Yeah. So let's, let's pray for her, lift her up. And, of course, pray for all those on the prayer list that are, are uh, lost, that need the Savior. Uh, lift them up to the Lord in prayer. And then Karen and I went up and stayed. You remember when we went to New Hampshire to visit uh, there with, uh, when uh, Rebecca was working. We stayed with a family that has been at the Wilds in, in, in North Carolina. Then they went out to the Wilds in Colorado. And then they were working here in New Hampshire. Their 17-year-old son committed suicide, uh, uh, I think, yesterday. And so very difficult situation there. Uh, so pray for uh, the family. It's the Sodola family. So... Lift them up to the Lord in prayer. That's uh, just a tragic, um, you know, uh, God help us all to help others. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute in the message uh, this morning. And so lift up that family if you would. Um, we're going to stay with the same. Uh, I mentioned Wednesday night and we're going to switch over to the Chris Phillips family uh, as far as the missionary of the month. Um, and we're going to stay with that, but he's not going to come on the 22nd. So anyway, he, he booked it with somebody else, which is fine. It's no problem. He's going to come sometime in January. So uh, we switched that over from the Smith family because we felt like Chris Phillips was going to come. And so we thought that'd be good. But we're going to stay with that. Chris Phillips family, not going to switch it. Uh, we'll stay with that, and we're going to pray. And whatever his need might be, his family's need, uh, the missions uh, that he's working with, and, uh, and what God is calling him to do, we want to help him in any way, uh, shape, or form. Um, I did get back. This is uh, uh, just a blessing. Uh, we talked about in the deacons meeting uh, about um, just uh, helping people and, and maybe finding out if they really needed the help and things like that. Uh, but we prayed and sought God on what we needed to do and things like that. And uh, didn't mention that to any of the missionaries, but I did get a, I got a text from Josh Wagar. And this is what he said. He said, Pastor, he said, I just want to let you know that we certainly appreciate uh, the extra money. He said, but we're fully supported. We do not need the extra money. Uh, please uh, put that somewhere else as needed. Wow. Now, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> you got a, a young missionary, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying these other folks might have needed it, folks, but that was such a blessing to me. I was like, Wow, now, you know what that shows? It shows character, folks. Character. Well, I, I don't want to interrupt. You're fine. In, in the Josh and Sheriff situation, they're completely isolated. Yeah. Uh, they can't leave or nobody can come in. They have no COVID. Mm -hmm. But their supplies are slow coming in because the ships bring them in, have to set out the port mm -hmm. for a certain amount of days before they can come in. Right. And uh, they're, they're, they got a heart. They really, and for him to do that, it just blesses my heart so much. Well, yeah, because we look at it, you and I, our lens, and, 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 and we have this, you know, wanting to fix things, and, and yet they're completely uh, content and satisfied. You know, ah, it's just amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, again, praying about that, and, and, and I felt like right now we can just use that uh, to uh, for our other missionaries, uh, you know, where we give extra, like the things that we did for Miss McKeever, and, and uh, we can use that $25 a month to, to support, you know, put it right back in there for other people that have needs. And uh, what a blessing, folks. Hallelujah, what a Savior. But we, 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 honor, we give honor where honors do, but we know there's no man, folks, that, that does these things apart from God. You know, God works. He's, every man can find something to do with an extra 25 bucks a month, <laughs> right? And they're going. But when God's leading and God's guiding, you say, hey, you know, 
I want to give this here. Now, that's just, that's wonderful. <laughs> so I, I, I'm glad God reminded me of that to share with you. And, and just exciting uh, what God is doing. And uh, he, he, he has more. He has more, folks, to do. You know why? Because we're still living in the rapture hasn't taken place. And there's other things on the calendar for God to do. And he said, greater works shall we do. That's, that's, that's beyond comprehension. But the greater works, uh, we'll talk about that during the message. Amen. And, but anyway, hey, man, praise God. Glad you're here. And uh, let's lift each other up in prayer and, and pray for these families. Pray especially for those uh, that are lost. Uh, you know, Zach hasn't gotten back to me about the CD and the track. That's okay uh, because the Word of God is there and uh, he can receive it and believe and trust Christ. And that's wonderful there, too. And uh, so... Uh, let's continue to, to lift these uh, folks up uh, in prayer. <clears throat> Randy, how can you pray for us, please, sir? Oh, Lord, we do thank you, Father, for the many blessings that you do give us. Yes, yes, God, yes. Father, we're so undeserving. Mm -hmm. yes. Father, you're just so good to us. Father, help us to always be mindful that even though we think things are bad, they can always be worse. Sure. But, Father, we always need to look to you for our hope, our strength, mm -hmm. our comfort. And Father, I do pray for comfort this morning for the family of those lost loved ones. Yes, yes. Uh, this dear family in, in Vermont, Father. Mm -hmm. uh, Father, for Miss Ann mm -hmm. and for Jackie and Phil. Mm -hmm. Father, the homecoming of their father and husband. And, Father, we do pray for other families that have lost loved ones, Father. I, I think of a, a family that's uh, engulfed in there that uh, uh, the, the Dwight Hicks, Hicks family, Father, uh, is passing, Father, and their family. Father, I do pray that uh, you just give these comfort, Father. Father, I do pray for those that uh, are having uh, physical needs, Father, that you might meet each one as, as you see fit and according to your will. And Father, most of all, I pray for those that need spiritual help. Father, we all have someone that we know, whether it be family or just acquaintance or friends, co-worker or whatever, Father, we know someone that needs you. And Father, we just pray for your Holy Spirit's conviction on those people now, Father, as we meet here this morning, Father. I do pray for our pastor this morning, Father. I pray, pray for his mom, Father, Father, that you just bless her in a special way. Mm -hmm. Father, but I pray that you'd anoint our pastor this morning, Father, a fresh and new through the Holy Spirit, Father, that he might be able to preach with freedom. Mm -hmm. and Father, that you might give him total recall of, of his studies. Mm -hmm. and Father, that you might give us receptive minds and hearts, yes, Father, amen. through the word that he shares with us this morning. Amen. Bless us now, Father, and just, just smile upon us with mercy, Father. Yes. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you for mentioning my mom. Didn't mention to you my mom, but uh, they still, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> we don't know. Uh, they got together, the cardiologists and the neurologists, and they were supposed to get together and figure something out, and they're still figuring things out. And uh, so, but God's got it figured out. He knows all. And uh, just pray for my dad as he, uh, you know, he's trying to hold back. Uh, you know, he's been he's been taking care of mom for four years uh, now since she had this. Uh, brain hemorrhage and so he knows what's best uh, I believe he's the best caretaker for her and so they're wanting to tell her to do this and do that and he's just like you know we, we need to do what we're already doing just tell us tell us what the problem is you know so just just pray uh, that my dad would have wisdom of course with all the things uh, you know one person can get in there and so they're switching off with my two sisters and spending the night and helping my dad and just different things and so I just pray that uh, we have wisdom. I tell you, folks, when, when, when I got the call, this perfect peace in my heart. Uh, can't tell you, you know, it just, if God had a desire to take my mom home, I was glad for that. If he wanted to keep her here, I was glad for that. I just thank God that his will be done. Amen. It don't matter what I desire. I, I got to see my mom for the last eight months. It's been the best year of my life. I just, there's no question what God and only God can do in a person's heart and to change them. And 
that uh, I didn't have the relationship with my mom and dad that I should have had. It's just honesty, folks, honesty. And, and uh, God has changed that. And uh, it's just thrilling. Uh, you know, I can, my mom can go home and be with him, you know, and I can say, praise be to God. Thank you, God, you gave me. And he may give me another eight years. Folks, I don't know what God, listen, I have no idea, but I'm just going to tell you. Got the call? I said, it's in your hands, God. If you want to take my mom, wouldn't it be selfish, selfish of me to want to keep my mom here when Jesus wants her to be with him? Absolutely, folks. But listen, God knows, right? And we're not talking about going out here and killing ourselves, right? We're not talking about running into a tree because I drank or something. We're talking about God's sovereign, known will. He, now, he knows whether or not you're going to go get drunk and run into a tree, folks, but that's not his will for you. Amen. Amen. But he knows all of us when we're going to die. <clears throat> just the real thing is we need to be prepared, don't we? Amen. We need to be ready. And uh, I tell you, folks, I'm just going to be honest with you. Most people are not ready. Even people that sit in church pews, even people that think that, uh, you know, that they are ready, I don't think they're ready. I see, absolutely. Now, we're going to turn in our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 8, and we're going to look at this subject, uh, wisdom versus foolishness. And really, you could say this, you could say righteousness and uh, ungodliness. You could say good, and you could say evil. Now, there was a day where there was, there, was, there was sort of a separation point, wasn't there? Now, again, all societies, again, tend to go back into darkness, true or false. If you look back on history, that's just true, folks, it's true. The Bible says in, 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 that, uh, in, in Noah's day that the, all the thoughts of man was wicked continually. He had no good thoughts, so we understand that. And then God sins, and he sent the judgment, of course, the flood, and and uh, restarted with uh, Noah and his three sons and, and, and their wives and his wife. And, and, and man began again. And then again, what happened? The same thing, you know. And, and, and you know, I'm praying, I'm praying for two things. And God's going to have to do both of them, revival or rapture. Uh, but, you know, it's really, you know, as I said, it used to be there was a, a separation line. And now it's, it's, it's like this, isn't it? It's, and it's, it's, I'm talking about, you know, the Christian, the church, and, and the world, and now it's, it's, it's like that today. Vance Havner said in the 80s, he said the church first flirted with the world, then the world, uh, the church courted the world, and he said now the wedding and the marriage is upon us. Isn't that not true? Today. How much worse today in 2020 do we see that? And this was in the 80s, folks. We haven't had a, a true heaven-sent revival in over 100 years. Bless his heart, old Bobby Robertson. Praise, his, praise God's name for him. And uh, he said he'd only seen two in his lifetime. Bobby lived a long time. He said he only saw two, what he would call true revivals in churches. I don't know if I've ever seen one. Have you? I want to see one, though. I want God to work. I want God to change us from the inside out. The time is now. The time's not some future date. We need change. And I believe with all my heart, and I believe it's true. I know it's true. The only way is the Spirit of God and the Word of God. You know, knowledge is one thing. Wisdom's a whole different ball game. And really, you know, it's time for God's church to ask God for wisdom for the knowledge that we do have and give us more knowledge that we might have more of his wisdom to know what to do with that knowledge. And so in, in Proverbs chapter 8, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful personification, really, of Christ when it's speaking of wisdom. You can actually put Christ in here, and, and you can see this, but he's speaking of wisdom. Perfect wisdom, which only comes from above, it comes from God and God alone. And God desires for us and his children to have this wisdom. Now, folks, listen, the world does not want this. And really, the truth of the matter is, today's church doesn't want this. 
When I walked in here today, I had no idea that my tie was crooked. Right, Paul? I had no idea my tie was crooked. Paul said he, he didn't say anything. Paul reached up and he straightened out my tie. I said, hey, was, was, was my tie crooked? He said, he said, he said, yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit off. Now, can I tell you something? I almost, I almost called you the apostle Paul. Paul. <laughs> Boy, I put, some, I put some heavy shoes on you, brother. Don't do that. Paul, Paul did not come here today to change my tie. Paul saw something in my physical appearance. He knew I was going to be on YouTube as a YouTube star. So he said, I don't want my pastor dressed like that. No, that's not what happened. He saw something simple, a tie out of place, and he moved it for me. That's it. And what do I do? Thank you, Paul. You know why? Because I... I don't want my tie crooked. I'm not, I didn't put my tie on this morning to come into church and for it to be crooked. Did you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, it, listen. This is what the Bible in truth does. I'm not here. I'm not here to point out your failures. Right? I'm not here to try. But hey, you got some. Amen. And so do I. And the Spirit of God is our loving friend. Amen. In this book right here, folks, can I tell you something? Woo! This book is a love letter written by God and the Spirit to teach us not to hinder us, but to help us. And yet, we continue to avoid it like it's the plague. And yet God still speaks. He still has mercy. But do you realize there's a day coming, folks? There's a day coming where you're not going to live on this earth again. Amen. So it's so much better, isn't it, to be changed today? than to wait some other time that you might not even have? So you can walk out of here today changed. I'm talking about God. What an opportunity it is. I was praying this morning and reading the scriptures. I said, God, here's another opportunity for all of us to face you and to face ourselves and to face your word. And you can change us. Amen. Wonderful. Glorious inside change. Do you realize I'm going to say this to you? Feel like, oh, maybe. I don't know. People spend more energy faking what they say they want to be rather than letting God do his changing work in them and rest in him. Amen. God help us. And so. I love Bible terminology. What you're going to see first and foremost here is you're going to see wisdom crying out. It's a call to you today. Will you listen? Will you pay attention? Now, listen, I'm just the vessel. God flowing through me to give you the word, what he desires for you to have. I haven't even finished those 16 pages of notes of the tabernacle because God says, this is what I want you to do. We got a few more to go, but God wants us here. So we got to go where God wants us to go. So this morning, as we do some comparisons, as you look in the word and let the word look in you, see what God is crying. See what the wisdom, what wisdom says to you. Verse one, doth not wisdom cry. Now, this is a question, folks, right? Can I ask you something? Is not wisdom crying out today in 2020? Amen. God calls. God's still calling. Amen. Aren't you glad? 
Praise God. Aren't you glad God hadn't given up? Amen. Amen. And by the way, I love what God says to his children over and over again. Did you realize if you're one of God's children, he's never going to give up on you? His mercy endureth forever. Some translations say his steadfast love. I like that, man. His steadfast love. Wow. Although we run from God and we don't love God, we love ourselves and we love the world and we know it's not right, but God loves us. Amen. And I'm telling you, he loves us willingly. Wow. He wants us to love him willingly too. Amen. There's no need for me to try to force people to love me or love God or anybody else because it's going to do you absolutely no good. But I tell you, when you start loving him, amen. And reckon you'll never start loving him though till you really recognize how much he loves you. And that'd be wise for all of us. Wisdom cries out. Christ cries out. Christ mourns a kid over a lost and dying world. But Christ mourns over his own church today that they don't see the real purpose in life. Folks, all this is going to burn up one day. Judgment is coming and it's here. The Bible's clear. They will be doing exactly what Lot and Noah's days were doing. And that's where we are. Literally. Insanity. Amen. Marrying and giving in marriage. And all these things that's going on today. And yet we don't understand. This is what he says. He says, does not wisdom cry? That's a question. And understanding put forth her ver voice? Can you not hear? Can you not hear what God is saying? Folks, oh, listen. Prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes. And yet we're blind. We live in a world because we want comfort and not Christ. We want a crown, but we don't want to earn that crown. We don't want the cross. You realize this life is a life of a cross. Y'all realize that, right? It's a life of death. To you. But God says, he that uh, tries to keep his life will lose it. But he that gives his life shall gain it. <laughs> what? <laughs> now that's not, that's not worldly understanding. The world says get everything you can while you can. And can everything you get. And then go after more. More, more, more. God says more of him. More of him. And the less you'll have to have of these earthly goods. Amen. Now, Paul and Lucy, Lucy asked us to pray. We did Wednesday night. We didn't pray today. You said something about downsizing. You know what you said? Downsizing. <laughs> downsizing. When you're downsizing, I tell you, when you downsize, you got to get rid of stuff. <laughs> and, and oftentimes, like Karen, when she pulls up the drawer and there's 30 keys in there, and she says, what are these for? <laughs> well, that's to my 1945 Ford that's over there in the scrap shop. I want to keep that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Throw it away. I'm never going to drive that 1945 Ford. But, but you know, I got, you know that, that, that's called the old uh, wanter. Keep all these things around, you know, that you're never going to see again. Now, folks, listen to me. Can I ask you a question? We got two, we got two two-year-old boys back here. Two two-year-old boys back here. And they need a godly influence. Right. And not just from the pastor. They need a godly influence for every Christian in here. I'm sick and tired of seeing young people thrown to this world because God's people keep watching it happen. That's so what we got to do. We got to do what God wants us to do. We got to pray for them. We got to love them. I understand. Now, we got to quit saying that they're just two. Well, God's just God. Now, they're going to act like two years. Well, you know, I know all that. 
I know the wells and the buts, folks. Trust me, I get them every single day of my life. God's not interested in that. God's not interested in what you and I can do by psychology. God's interested in what he can do by his spirit. Amen. Don't tell me. I know God can speak to anybody. Yeah, folks, let's go. <laughs> Come on now. You with me? He spoke to a donkey. And the donkey was wise enough more than the king. That's totally insane. Wisdom would tell you, this worldly wisdom that we have, man, that a donkey can't hear anything. Well, no, it's the king that can't hear from God, so we had to speak to the donkey. Could it be? Could it be today in 2020 that God's trying to speak to us? Absolutely. God's still calling. Wisdom's still crying. Hey Amen. I'm glad. God wants to call somebody out. First, he wants to call his church out of the world. He's already, he already called us out of it. So what in the world are we doing in it? Or living in it. That is what I mean. Right? Does not wisdom cry? Does not understanding lift up her voice? She's not putting it forth. Now, folks, listen to me. I love, man, I love the Bible. <laughs> the Bible is so real. This is not, you remember what Jesus said to the people there when they were, when they were uh, uh, to crucify him? Remember what he told them there in the garden when they came to get him? <laughs> he said, look, this wasn't hidden. <laughs> I, did all, I did all these things out. You saw, right? This is not, folks, listen, look what it says in verse 3. She, she standeth at the top of the high place. <laughs> Many people, <laughs> people say, well, I just don't know what the will of God is. <laughs> really? There's a good way to find out. It's not hidden. Now, it's hidden for them that are lost. They need to be saved. That, that's God's will for them. <laughs> Amen, preacher. But for the saved, it's in the Word of God. But you can't, see, the problem is, you can't figure it out. You need the Spirit of God to teach you. He's your teacher. And so you, you ask the Spirit, give me wisdom. Give me not. I can read. I can, listen, I can read the Bible and gain all the knowledge I want from the Bible. But you know, the Bible tells me knowledge puffeth up. The, 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 the fleshly man. I need the Spirit of God to teach me. What? So I can give the Bible to others. To other people. God help us. He says, you standeth at the top of the high places. By the way in the places of the past. What does that mean? <laughs> you can find wisdom on the path you want. God's crying out to you. Now folks, listen to me. I remember this. There, there, I praise God that God has given me uh, a, to a memory that I can remember most things. <laughs> but anyway, I remember James Dobson did this thing on the world and, 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 and the church. And he was talking about, and you guys, can, you guys, I don't, how old is Dobson? Or is Dobson still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. He's in his 70s. All right, he's in his 70s. So he's speaking of in his life, he's speaking of in, uh, as a teenager in the 50s, okay, in that area, right? How many of you are teenagers in, teenagers in the 50s and willing to tell us about it? Oh, right, amen. I like you. He said back in that day, he said there was doors of sin, okay? He said there were doors of sin. He said not everybody was saved, okay? He said, but there was doors of sin. You just have a door here, a door here, a door here, a door here. And most people were walking down the corridor, say this is a corridor, and here's a door of sin, here's a door of sin, here's a door. The multitude of people were outside of those doors. Now, he said this, folks, in the 80s. He said it's not that way today. He said today most people are inside the doors of sin. And not only is the, 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 the uh, immorality, he's talking about moral people and saved people, a lot of them are inside these doors. These very few people walking in morality. 
most people are walking in immorality. And you see, you see the problem is, folks, that was in the 80s before cell phones and internet and all these things. That's why it's so important to quit on your life. Amen. And ask God to help you to help somebody else in their life. I'm telling you, our young people are bombarded by sin. It's nothing like when you and I were growing up. And especially that you, you, you that grew up in the 50s. It's a continual <laughs> cycle of wickedness calling them. But even still, this is my hope. You see, God's right there. There's no doubt in my mind, this young man who took his life, this 17-year-old, I told my daughter, my daughter was able to talk with him over that summer and different things. She knew a lot about him more than I did. And this is what I told her. I had no idea, God. I had no idea I was going to be doing a funeral of Joshua Dunn that took his own life. I had no idea what God was going to do that for my own daughter to be able to tell her. I said, honey, because everybody makes this statement. I wish I'd have been there. I wish I'd have said something else. But I'm going to tell you, folks, bottom line, no doubt in my heart, my mind, that Joshua's, before he took his life, and before this young man took his life, God was there. God's greater than you and me. And we think in our minds that we ought to do right. But I'm telling you, God does not want any young person, middle-aged person, or older person to take their own life. He'll do a whole lot more than you and I could ever do to spare him. But that doesn't mean they'll listen. That doesn't mean that. So don't take the place of God. <clears throat> Amen. Don't, don't think that hey, you... Now, again, how all this works, I don't know. But I'm just telling you, I believe in a God. Desires people to come to him. And he cries out. He cries out. He's, he's, he's all wisdom. He's all understanding. This is, this is not hidden. He says that, that see, this, this, this wisdom is, is right there on, on, the, on top of the high places and is in the way and the places of the path. She cries, the Bible says, at, at the gates and at the entry of the city. In at the, coming in at the doors, this again is, is a place where they, they, they had merchandise and they did their business and, and things at the gates. And, and listen, don't think that God is not crying out to the business world. <laughs> He's crying out everywhere. His wisdom cries. Yeah, and then listen, can he use you? Absolutely, if you're surrendered to him and, and you allow him to. Wherever you are, you can be anywhere. I don't know how God wants to use you, but he does. And he desires today to, to, to cry forth through his people with not only their lips, but more importantly, really, their lives. Because, listen, when God has your life, guess what he has? He has your lips. And he can teach you when to speak and when to be silent. Right? This morning when I went up to the land, I started pulling off. They wanted to meet me up there at 7.30 this morning. And uh, so I started pulling off in the truck, and, and I remembered there was no tracks in the truck. And so I said, I want to go back. I had an incident up in Radford where I didn't have any tracks with me, and it was not good. I didn't like that. I want to at least have a, a gospel witness. I got a gospel witness within me, but I want to have something I might be able to hand to somebody if God wants me to. So... The last time I was up at the cemetery, which was a while back, 2016, for Miss Joanne, there was three guys up there. And so I got three tracks to go up there because I didn't know how many people were going to be there. I gave out none of them. There was only one man up there. And the man seemed to be a Christian. We talked about spiritual things. We talked about different things. He seemed to know the Lord. God didn't have me to give him. And when I'm pulling out, 
after a spiritual conversation, me having no idea what's going to go on, I'm just going up there and say, God, I'm your vessel. Right? You understand? This is not about me. I'm just going up there. I don't, I, who am I going to meet? I don't know. <laughs> but God knows. So I'm pulling out the truck. He says, hey, hey, hey. He said, would you pray for a friend of mine, dear friend of mine? I can't tell you his name. But he's got throat cancer, I believe. He doesn't want anybody to know his name right now. I say, praise God. Now, what should I do? Should I walk away from there and just throw up some kind of now lay me down to sleep prayer? No. No, God. God intervened in all this. This man had enough to stop me as I'm pulling out. To say, hey, wait a minute. Right? And so, again, God, God at work in, in, in people's lives, and God puts us in places, and, 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 and no matter where it is, whether it's, whether it's uh, doing what you're already doing in life, God's there in you, and he should be. See, anyway, <clears throat> wisdom speaks in these places. And then I like this. It, it comes down to uh, some, some individual. He says, unto you. Oh, men, I call. My voice is to the sons of men. God cries out, folks, to his creation. Amen. You see, folks, listen. We, we, we desire for God to call out to other people. But what about us? God calls out to you. We're good, folks. Listen, we're good at fixing everybody else's sins. Are we not? We're sure faulty on our own. God's speaking to us. You see, if we could look at a world gone mad, and this world has gone mad. Oh, my goodness, folks. But did not God tell us that it was going to be like that? I mean, God told us all these things. He said in the last days that there would be all these. I mean, I've never in my life, I, I see a man, I see a man Oh, help me, Lord. I see a man sitting, folks. This is not about, you must understand, where we are in America is about good and evil. It is not about this guy and that guy. But it's obvious, or it should be obvious, where evil is, again, should be. But did you ever dream we would be in, a, in an election and a man is sitting in a town hall meeting and he says these words? It's okay if an eight-year-old boy thinks that he is a girl and that we should give everything that we have to provide for this eight-year-old boy that wants to be a girl. He has that right. That's insanity. This is the world you live in. This is the world I live in. But the reason we're here is because God's people again have gotten caught up in the world and worldly things and we live just like them. Now, that is atrocious to us. Or it should be. But you realize it's not atrocious to a lot of churches. They think it's okay to be a homosexual and a lesbian and a transvestite. They think this is all right, folks. Where did they get this from? They got it from the world. Because the world has invaded the church. And we're, we're, too, we're too afraid. We're too uh, uh, scared half to death that something might happen to our lives. Well, quit holding on to your life and give it up. People need Jesus. They need truth. They don't need our arrogance. They don't need our madness and our anger. We need to be angry at what we should be angry about. 
And that's sin. Because God hates sin. He's always hated it. But we need to hate it in our own lives. God help us. He says, I call unto you. My voice is to the sons of men. He said, oh, ye simple. Now, the word simple, I'm going to use this tomorrow in this funeral. You know, Miss Ann, Mr. Cliff, Mr. Cliff's just a simple man. He's just a simple man. Now, people are so funny. Any simple man that trusts the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, he's a wise man. I don't care what he knows about this world and his foolishness. Now, see, I have a hard time because people accuse me of being against education. And I got, I got two degrees. I got eight years of education. I could be a doctor. Did y'all know that? I could be a doctor. I got eight years. Two degrees. Who cares about that? What does that mean to God? It doesn't mean that you don't get an education. That was for me, whatever God wanted for me. But at the end of the day, I need to be educated in God. We're talking about wisdom and foolishness. There's no doubt that God says plainly in his word, he, Jesus said this, he said we need to be simple concerning evil and wise concerning good. Amen, right? How, many of, how are we going to know even what good is <laughs> when we learn it from somebody else other than God and His Word? <clears throat> now, folks, listen. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. I don't know. I'm talking about in life. <laughs> maybe I dropped out of some sky somewhere and I don't see it the way it really is. But I'm telling you, Isaiah said they'll call good evil and evil good. Right. And I'm telling you, somebody look you straight in the eye and do to total wickedness and they'll tell you it's for your good. I'm just trying to help you, Paul. You know, I just, I'm, I'm here to help you. Sin's not here to help you. Satan's not here to help you. Self's not here to help you. This world is not here to help you. There's only one that can help you, and that's God. Amen. And he cries out. And praise God that he, why? I think you said this this morning to somebody that was talking to you. You said, better than I deserve. <laughs> that's so true, isn't it? For all of us. We are so much better off than we deserve, folks. Right? Are you saved? Do you know the Lord? Do you realize this is not our home? Praise God. But yet we act as if it is. No, we need to be rescuing the perishing and caring for the dying. Amen. Do we really believe that hell is real? And that heaven is real? Are we living that on a daily basis? Do we really know what our purpose is in life? And by the way, it's not to win souls. That's not, that's not your purpose in life. That's a byproduct. The purpose of your life is to please God and bring pleasure to God and enjoy who God is. And guess what? You will share that message with other people and you'll have a great desire for them to know God too. Because God is not a selfish God. He's a giving, gracious, abundant God. He desires for us to come to him. He said, oh, you simple. You, you realize to be simple, you, you got to get out the clutter. You, you got to put some things aside. He said, understand wisdom. Be simple. He said, and, and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. He said, he said, here, here. You know, oftentimes I make this statement. I say, listen to me. When I say listen to me, what I'm trying to say to you is listen to what God says in his word, please. He said, here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. Folks, listen to me. There's no better life than to live right. Yeah. Amen. Clear conscience. Transparency. Amen. God working in your heart and your life. Yes, you will fail. We all fail. 
but he never fails. Amen. The only reason why we get back up is because of him. Amen. He lifts us up. He reaches down and pulls us up. And he continually does that. And he will continue to do that as long as we live on this earth. But one day, amen, we're just going to listen. Don't you think we should practice that now? Just listen. Hear what God says to you today. Hear his voice. Listen to him. He's going to speak excellent things. Right things. Amen. Don't you want to live a life of excellence? Truly? But most people, again, we know they're not going to hear. They're not going to heed. They're going to continue to go after the world because we're so wedded to the world today. It's like we can't get loose, but we can. We can. Because God said we can. He said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. He said, you're more than conquerors. Amen. He said, in this world, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. So that means we've overcome it. Hear the word of God. Hear what God says in his word. Man, there's nothing. Is there, is there, now other than being, other than being forgiven of sin, right? Knowing that truth, that I've been forgiven of sin, right? The penalty of sin. That's wonderful, isn't it? Amen? To know that, truly get an understanding and just have a heartfelt love for God. Thank you, God. Thank you for forgiving me and releasing me from the penalty of sin, right? That's beautiful. But I'll tell you what, there's something that goes further than that. Being free from the power of sin while I'm living on earth. Daily. You see, the penalty of sin, I'm never facing that again. Hey, man, can I read you something? I sent this out to uh, some folks this morning, but I got to read it to you. Wow. How many of you, turn over with me uh, real quickly to Colossians. Colossians chapter, uh, uh, I'm not going to call that person now. They just called me right in the middle of preaching. That's all I believe. So amazing. I don't know. Colossians chapter 2. Look at me here. How many of you ever heard the term, they nailed it? Y'all ever heard that before? Like in gymnastics, you know, uh, you remember old, uh, back in the day, uh, Mary Lou Retton. Y'all remember Mary Lou Retton? Remember she did them crazy tumbling span, and, and uh, she said, right? And she nailed it. How many of you asked your kids uh, before, you know, they took a test and, and, and things and, and, and they got done? You said, How, how'd you do on that test? I, said, I nailed it, Dad. I nailed it. Right? Y'all have heard that term before, right? Let me share something with you that the Bible says about the penalty and the, the transgressions. Everything that was against you and me. In Colossians chapter 2, I hope this thrills your soul. And I hope you hear every time somebody says, they nailed it. I hope you hear this in your heart. Blotting out, verse 14, the, right, the handwriting of ordinance that was against us. Right? Every last one of us here at a time in our life was condemned. The writing was on the wall, right? It was against us. Which was contrary to us. He took it out of the way. Nailing it to his cross. My sin, your sin, everything that was against us, God nailed it to his son on the cross. Hallelujah. The penalty of sin, I don't have to face it. But in this life, I'd be so wise to understand that the power of sin has no hold of me either. You see, when he died, I died. When he was buried, I was buried. When he rose, I rose. <clears throat> and now what's amazing, 
Oh, it's amazing, folks. Everything he did on earth, now, he says, he can do through me. And I don't have to be a, a, a fallen for sin and living that way myself. Wouldn't it just be wise to listen to God and his word? Amen. Rather than listening to ourselves, I'm just never going to overcome this. Forget all that. Yeah, your flesh, you'll never overcome it. But he's already, come, he's already overcome it. <laughs> Why not just believe him and trust him? Hey, Amen. Wouldn't that be wise of all of us to do? Just say, God, today, today, not next week, not some other time, but God, today, I want to listen to your voice. I want to hear you crying to me and to me alone. I'm not going to focus on somebody else. I know that you're speaking excellent things. By the way, he wants you to be excellent. Over uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 when he says add to, yeah, virtue, that's what that word means. It means excellent. Excellent. God desires for us to be excellent in him. He says, my lips shall speak right things. And then we'll close with this. He says, for my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Now don't you think wisdom would tell us if, 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 if wickedness was an abomination to the Lord in his lips in wisdom shouldn't it be to ours? Should we be asking God, God help us, God help us to control our tongues and to watch what we say. And just, God, just be with us and help us. We, we just die or need your help. We, we cannot. There, there's no, it's not 99% me or you, Lord, and 1% me. No, it's 100% you, Lord, and me. Just surrender my life to you. God, help me to just listen. You see, folks, listen. God calls. Wisdom calls. Under, you, you can have understanding of God. You can listen if only you would. But the problem is most people say no to God. In his wisdom. It's always going to be like this. No, a thousand times no. No. It doesn't have to be like why, Pastor? Because God said it does. God said you can enjoy Him. You can enjoy His Word. You can live this life that He's called you to live, but not on your own. Rest in Him. Let Him do the work through you. We would all be wise to say, God, please examine my heart. See where I am this morning. Let me see where I am, God. I want to hear what you say. I want you to do the work. I don't want to do it myself. I must yield. Now, the book of Romans says it like this. We, we reckon, okay? We, we reckon, we put it on God's account, what God says about us, okay? And, and then we yield to God. We believe, we, we trust that he's going to do what only he can do. God help us. Let's stand to our feet where the Randy's going to come, Miss Melanie. <clears throat> Once again, you have a choice. You can choose. choose God's way or you choose your way. Yesterday I had no idea on coming home from Radford that I was going to be in Mount Airy. I 
dear wife wanted some ice cream. So we decided to go in the ice cream shop. As a matter of fact, the ice cream shops <laughs> were on the main street in Mount Airy. And it was packed with people. Packed with people. We got some ice cream. As a matter of fact, we got a scoop of ice cream with a <laughs> sugar cone for $2.50. That was amazing. Now, that's a story in itself, and we'll tell you about that later, maybe. But some young teenagers, and I guess their mom, were out in the streets, packed, and stopping people and saying, can I pray for you? Is there anything to pray for you? Do you mind if we pray? I said, sure. Man, you don't meet that every day. Somebody coming in the streets and actually pray for you. And I said, this is, this, is, this is a little funny part. We were holding hands. I don't know these people. I don't have a clue who they are. And I told the little girl, she I don't know how old she was, maybe seven or eight. And uh, I said, it's okay to hold my hand, honey. I said, I've already had COVID. Now listen to what she did. Of course, she's young, and she went. I said, no, it's really all right, honey. It's okay. And this little girl, teenage girl, she was nervous. She, uh, maybe, maybe nobody else stopped and got to pray for, for him, but she was real nervous in her prayer. And she prayed for us. And she said, over these people. If they have this or that, she prayed. Of course, she was stumbling in her prayer. and It was a sweet prayer. When we got done, I said, hey, guys, I said, look, I'm born again, saved by the grace of God. And I appreciate you doing this. <laughs> now, I don't know who these people are affiliated with, folks. Do you understand what I'm saying? some craziness. I don't know. But I do know they were willing. Number one, we saw them sing the gospel songs in the middle of all this. And number two, they were willing to come out of their comfort zone. In about time, we ask God to help us to come out of the comfort zone. Amen. And when somebody does come out of their comfort zone, should we say, hey, yeah, sure, pray for me. Y'all need some prayers? We all do. That right there to me was wisdom calling out in the streets. You know? Just trying to pray for people. Doing what God would have them do. I appreciate it. Great deal. Let's pray. Father, you're calling. You're calling your people, as Paul prayed earlier, to repentance. But not just repentance. We're glad that we can repent. But we also can believe now. And Father, if we couldn't believe, then there'd be no need to repent. And so as Colossians chapter 2 tells us, that we, the same way that we received you, and that's repentance and faith, we need to live that way every day of our lives. And so we pray repentance would take place all across this building. And then not only that, that belief would take place, that you have forgiven us, that you do want Father, we pray. Use this as only you can. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father, for the opportunity that we have once again to allow you to do that work, that inward work in our hearts and minds to change us, to help us to be what you'd have us to be for your glory and for your pleasure. We pray this in Christ's wonderful name and for his sake. Hymn number 479, softly and tenderly, you come as God spoke.
input the world to harden our hearts towards God and his desire for us on a daily basis. We need his help. Randy Smith, you pray for us. God bless you. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and thank you for allowing us the privilege to be in your house once again today. <clears throat> Lord, help us to, to uh, meditate on the message and the words that we've heard today from, from, from your word and just uh, apply them to our lives, Lord, that we know you're more like you each and every day. Lord, we ask you to continue to be with Lord, the many prayer requests have been mentioned. Lord, we think especially of Ms. Ann and her family at this time. We just pray you'll be with them and comfort them. And Lord, just... Uh, Help us in everything that we do, Lord. May we honor and glorify you, and may we may we realize, Lord, that a lost and dying world is is um, in search of a savior, Lord, even when they don't realize it, and they're they're looking at our lives to see if they see a difference. Lord, help us to be that difference, Lord, that would draw them unto you, so that you can save them, Lord, before it's eternally too late. Thank you for loving us. In your name, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.